Well, a very good afternoon, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, I want to welcome all of you and thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to join us today. We are very excited to welcome our host, Uniglobe Travel Center. Our speaker is Summer Corbett, Sales and Marketing Manager for Uniglobe. Summer graduated from Florida State University in 2008 with degrees in international business, finance, and human resource management. At FSU, her passion for travel was ignited while studying marketing in Tokyo, Japan, and hospitality management in Lacine, Florida. I mean, <laughs> Switzerland. <laughs> she fed that passion by traveling the world after college and has now conquered all seven continents. In 2011, Summer joined Uniglobe Travel Center as an independent agent to pursue a business in group adventure travel. Most recently, she worked as an assistant marketing manager in the creative marketing department at CNN before joining Uniglobe at the beginning of 2016 to manage marketing and recruitment. Summer will be talking to us today about an extremely timely topic in the travel world, why Facebook advertising matters for home-based agents. Before we get started, please remember that you are all muted, but if you have questions for Summer, you can type them in at any time in the question area on the right-hand side of your screen. At the end of the presentation, we'll get to as many questions as we can. Also at the end of the presentation, Summer will be giving away a $50 gift card to one lucky travel agent who has attended this entire webinar. More about the giveaway later, but as a hint, you may want to take some notes during the presentation. So let's turn the microphone over to Summer so she can get started. Welcome, Summer. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to share about Facebook. It's kind of kind of one of my passions. I have I've actually had a Facebook for over 10 years back when um, it was only available to college students. Um, so I wouldn't consider myself an expert because that seems really cocky, but I do have a lot of experience. So hopefully I can help you guys with that. And um, if we're ready to jump in, I can just get going. Okay, so um, one of the things I, I <laughs> want to go over is why people don't already use Facebook ads. Um, and I like to play this game with my friends, usually when I'm trying to convince them to go on a trip. And that is, they basically just throw all of their reasons why not at me, and I just kind of shoot them down one by one. So I kind of want to play that game with you guys a little bit. Um, so the first thing I've actually heard people say is I have enough clients and if you have enough clients then that's fine then you probably uh, don't even need to be on this webinar and if you have enough clients you probably aren't on this webinar so um, you know some people feel like I, a little bit of peer pressure to always be on you know doing social or be on Facebook and if you are looking for new clients I do think it's important but if you've got as much as you can handle um, don't feel pressure to try and um, be on social and generate more so uh, what I also hear a lot is that you don't know how. Um, well, you also didn't know how to book travel until you know someone showed you how to do that. So um, most people, it's not that they you know they don't know how, but they are worried that it's going to be too complicated, so they don't even try. And what I'm hoping to do is kind of show you um, what it actually takes to do, so it doesn't seem as scary, and you'll be willing to kind of try it out for yourself. Um, I also hear that I that you don't want to learn how. Um, it reminds me of my dad. He won't learn how to use the remote. He just says, I want you to do it for me. And we're like, Dad, just learn how to use the remote yourself so that when we're not here. And he just says, no, I want you to do it for me. So I can't do it for all of you. So you're going to have to take a little bit of a leap. Um, and even if it isn't something that you're excited about, um, maybe you can see how easy it can be and um, be willing to learn. because. Facebook is not going anywhere. Um, you know, it used to be just college students, and now um, it's in every demo. Uh, billions of people use Facebook. So um, you can't just pretend it doesn't exist anymore. Um, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So um, another thing that I get is that you don't want random people as clients um, because you rely, I understand, a lot on that personal relationship, um, those referrals. But here's the thing, if you've ever done any kind of advertising in a newspaper, in a magazine, anything online, you're just throwing a broad net out to a bunch of people you don't know. Um, that's what advertising is, I mean, to get people that you wouldn't have interacted with otherwise. So the great thing about Facebook, which I'm going to 
tell you about in detail later is that you aren't just picking random people, you're picking your perfect client. Um, we'll see this a lot, but Facebook, I'll be honest, it's a little creepy in how much they know about you. And so um, they really try and make sure that ads are very targeted so that you only see things that are relevant to you. And that's why they use so much information to target. Um, and you have that available to you as well. Also, something that I hear is a lot of people don't realize that it's something they can do. They think it's for somebody who has a huge marketing budget. And that's absolutely not true. Um, if anything, it's the opposite. Facebook and social media sort of made uh, it was sort of the great equalizer in advertising and marketing because before something like Facebook, you would have had to pay for an expensive ad in a magazine or a billboard and only companies that had a lot of money could do that. But now you have the ability to spend dollars a day to find your perfect client um, and you have the exact same access that big companies have. Um, you have access to the exact same data and the same people. So don't let that um, scare you away. This is definitely for small businesses. Um, and the last thing, and I probably hear this one the most, is that you don't have time. Um, listen, if you don't have time to run a Facebook ad, you do not have time to have another client. Um, part of being a travel agent is also having a travel agency and running a business, and part of that is advertising. Um, you know, they're not going to magically appear at your door. You've got to invest some time and you've got to invest some money. And that's a hard one for people as well because they think they're throwing money away. But that's really not the case. You've got to make an investment. Um, just a little stat for you. The U.S. Small Business Administration recommends spending 7 to 8 percent of your gross revenue for marketing and advertising if you're doing less than $5 million a year. So that's for people who are in small businesses. Um, they recommend spending seven to eight percent of what you're actually bringing into your pocket um, toward advertising. You've got to reinvest in your business if you want it to survive. So to break down some of those numbers, if you're bringing in, let's say, fifty thousand dollars a year, that's thirty five hundred dollars or four thousand dollars a year toward advertising, which comes out to about three hundred a month. Um, if you're a little bit on the lower end and you're making thirty thousand a year, that's about two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars um, a year, which is spending two hundred dollars a month on advertising. So I would challenge you if that sounds scary, just try five percent. It's incredibly an uh, incredibly conservative number, but try five percent of your revenue. Um, and that would be for someone making fifty thousand about twenty five hundred dollars a year, which is a little over two hundred dollars a month. Um, about 150 a month for someone making 30,000. So I would challenge you to try and spend between 150 and 200 dollars a month toward advertising. Um, realistically, if you get one uh, booking, that could pay for itself, and there's a good chance that you're going to get more than one every month. So just keep that in mind um, that you have to make the investment of time and you have to make a little bit of monetary investment if you want your business to grow. So let's get into it a little bit. Um, I'm not going to talk about organic reach, but I just wanted to um, kind of point out the difference between organic reach and Facebook reach for anyone who's not completely familiar. So organic reach is what's free. It's what you post on your page, um, on, your, on your business page, and your fans see that. Facebook ads, um, which is paid reach, is obviously you pay for them, so you're paying for ads. The reason that paid reach is so important um, is mainly honestly for the targeting the reason that facebook has gone to a lot more paid um reach rather than organic reach is because there was just too much there's i mean there's billions of people on facebook there was too much content in people's news feed there's no way they could see anything relevant to them so yes of course facebook wants to make money let's not pretend that's not the case but they also want to make sure that you're only seeing ads that are relevant to you um, and not just getting bombarded with a lot of things that you don't want to see so because of that, organic reach has really declined. You can see there um, sometimes only between two and six and a half percent of your fans are seeing your organic content. Um, so that's why paid reach is so important. And by paid reach, I mean Facebook ads, which we're going to go into. Um, so some helpful things to keep in mind is to only promote your own content when you're doing an ad. Um, you don't ever want to put out an ad that links back to someone else. 
So like, let's say Carnival is having some sort of flash sale that you want to promote that you can book for someone. That's fine. Um, but don't use Carnival's ad or Carnival's post um, as your ad because that's going to link back to Carnival. Make sure that you um, create a post talking about Carnival's ad or Carnival's flash sale, but have it linked back to your website or your Facebook page or where they can message you, message you directly through Facebook. And I'll show you how you do that um, when we get into it. I just want to make sure that um, you're really clear that you're not promoting someone else's content. Um, if you are creating an ad and you're using an image, which you always should be, uh, image or video, is use as little text overlay as possible. And what I mean by that is uh, text that's actually on top of the picture, not the text that you write um, you know, above the picture, but what's actually on the picture, because Facebook doesn't want anything to look too much like an ad, so they penalize you the more text that you have on top of your picture. So some people just post a picture and there's nothing on it. Some people will put their logo. Some people might, you know, put a phrase or something. Uh, just make sure it's not, it doesn't take up too much of the image, not just the amount of words, but the size of it. Um, also, don't be long winded. I would say if you can't say it in one or two sentences, it's probably not worth saying. You want to keep it exciting, but people, you probably know this from looking through your Facebook, uh, people don't want to read a novel about what you're offering. So just get it out as quickly as you can um, in a sentence or two. And the last thing to keep in mind is trust the algorithms. Facebook is an incredibly um, complex company with very complex algorithms. They've got machine learning, so their, their algorithms are constantly improving themselves. Um, there's no way to understand how they all work. So just trust the algorithms and don't think too hard about it. If you really want to know about the algorithms, you can look that up yourself. Um, but they are designed to optimize what you're seeing um, and therefore they're optimized for what your clients want to see. Um, so although yes, they are, it is a bit creepy, everything they know about you, their algorithms are effective. So just um, let them do their thing. Okay, so the first thing we're talking about is boosting a post. And I actually thought that the booster seat was a very good analogy because boosting a post is not quite the same as creating an ad from scratch. There, It's a little bit easier. It doesn't take as much time. Um, but there's also, you're not getting as much targeting. So it's a nice way to kind of get your feet wet um, before you kind of move up to a regular chair and the, you know, sit at the big kids table. So I'm going to show you how to boost a post and some of the reasons why you would boost a post rather than going ahead and making a full ad. So one of the things I do want to point out is everybody has a different strategy for Facebook. So there are multiple ways to do it. There are probably other people who think that there are different reasons to boost a post. These are, what I've created here is my best recommendation that I think will simplify it for you. Um, because I, I don't want to overwhelm you. I know that you're going to get a lot of information today. So we really just want to um, try and keep this as simple as possible. So two reasons you boost a post, and I will show you how to do that next, but two reasons that you would boost a post is, is if you already, um, if you have a post you want just your fans to see. So I know that you think that when you post something that maybe all of your fans see it, but because of that, you know, decline in organic reach, that's not necessarily true. So let's say, let's go back to the carnival option uh, or example, the flash sale. Let's say you've got something that, you know, there's two days left if they book it. Someone who doesn't know you, never heard of you, isn't one of your fans, maybe isn't the best market to take advantage of that deal or that promotion. Um, so you don't really want to push this out to everyone. But your fans are probably a little more loyal, at least know who you are. So you just want to push that out to only your fans for some sort of uh, something they have to take advantage of quickly. Just as an example, this is when it would be good to boost your post because you can choose to boost it only to your fans. Um, also, if you have created an organic post that's done really well, that's gotten a lot of likes or comments or shares, um, the likelihood is if it did well organically, it'll probably be popular um, with other people as well. So you might want to take a post that you already have on your, on your news feed and promote that through a boost. So here's a screenshot, which I'm not, um, I can show you sort of the live demo, but I probably can show you everything through the the screenshot because I will go back and forth a little bit between Facebook to show you some of it live. But this, um, as an example, this was something on our Uniglobe Travel Center. Um, now, I probably would not really um, promote this because it does link back to travel impressions 
Um, but just as an example, um, I just want to show you how you boost a post. So all of the posts that you already have on your um, feed, so your personal business feed, uh, have this boost post button. And when you click this boost uh, post button, it opens up. I had to kind of extend it a little bit here because my screen wasn't big enough, but um, it's going to basically show you this screen right here. Um, you can uh, choose an audience through targeting, which is if you click on that, it'll let you choose options for like age, gender, um, interests. So when you click on that, you'll see what the options are. Um, but you also can click on people who like your page um, and or you can pick people who like your page and their friends. Or these right here, which are uh, called lookalikes and leads, these are actually custom audiences that I've already created. And I'll show you how to do that um, as we get further down. But if you've ever created a custom audience, it'll show up here. So you can choose any of these things. So let's say it's, you know, you want people who like your page. Um, you can choose them here. And something else to note too is when I first clicked people who like my page, it just said living in and it had already um, chosen California because that's where our headquarters are. And so it was telling me I didn't have enough um, people in my area to boost to. And so all I had to do was hit the edit button and, and um, choose United States rather than choosing California. So if for some reason you're getting an error and it says that you don't have enough people, um, it might be because you need to broaden your area to just the United States and not um, just in your little tiny area. So this is where you'll see your budget. You can choose, um, that's your total budget, and you can choose that for one day, seven days, or 14 days. Um, you can choose when you want the ad to run until um, and so then it'll tell you based off of all the things that you put in here and here, um, it'll tell you how much you're spending per day. So as you can see, boosting this post, I could spend $3 per day and it would promote it to between 250 and 660 people, which could be all of your fans. Um, so it really is, it can be very cost effective and you'll see here what it's going to look like. Um, so you'll see kind of a preview of what the ad will look like. It'll have this, you'll know it's an ad because it has this little sponsored logo right here. And then for mobile newsfeed, you can click on that and it'll show you how the ad changes because it looks different in desktop than it does in mobile. So that's boosting a post. But what we really want to talk about, because that was just baby steps, now we want um, to eat at the adult's table and a regular chair and we want to create an ad from scratch. Um, and I'm going to be just, I'll apologize, I'm going to have to switch back and forth a bit because I do want to show you uh, this in Facebook Live so that you can see how it works. So some of the reasons to create an ad um, are to attract new fans because the more fans you have on your page, the more eyeballs you've got organically, but also um, it helps with your demo so you can see what kind of people are liking your page. Um, and really it, uh, a great thing with fans is it helps you to profile other people. So Facebook can basically say, okay, these are your hundred fans and these are their interests and these are their demos. I'm going to go out and find more people like it. Um, so the more fans you have, the better targeting you have. Um, you also, Facebook ads are great to promote your specialty. So you don't always just want to be pushing out um, deals or specials because it gets very salesy, but if you do want to promote just your specialty, I wouldn't recommend uh, putting out a post to a huge broad range of people saying, hey, I'm a travel agent. Um, I would say pick something that you specialize in and create an ad for it. So let's say you specialize in, the Mex in Mexico and the Caribbean, then create an ad about specializing in the Mexi Mexico and Caribbean, and then you target it to people who are interested in Mexico and the Caribbean. Now, if you have another specialty, that's fine, but just make it into a separate ad with a separate target um, because there's no reason to throw out this giant net of people um, when they're maybe not the kind of people that you want. You really want to take advantage of the information that Facebook has. Um, and that leads to targeting your perfect client. So this goes back to people worried about having a random person, right? Someone they don't know is their client. Well, what you can do is basically decide what is my perfect client? You know, uh, what's their age range? Is it males or females? Is it couples? Is it people who are married? Is it people who are engaged? Um, is it people who read um, travel and leisure? So you can really decide what kind of person would be your perfect client. 
And then you can literally pick that person in the targeting and that's who Facebook um, will send your ad out to. So um, we're gonna go live in a second, but I did wanna show you that basically I put some screenshots in here so that if you refer back to this um, or if you um, refer back to the slides that you'll, you'll have a couple things to look at since I won't be there to guide you through. So uh, the way that you get to your ads to create an ad is there's this little on your regular personal profile page. Um, I'm on our page, I'm on our Uniglobe page, but up here you can see it says summer. So this is my personal Facebook. I click this little arrow and I can click on create ads. That's gonna open up this screen here. And this is where you choose your campaign objective. So there's all of these different things for choosing what you want. Um, and I'll show you the ones that matter to you so that you don't have to worry about all of these. So um, the thing about um, brand awareness and reach, although they sound great, probably not the best option for you. Brand awareness is more for people who just want a name recognition. Um, so maybe a brand that just wants a name recognition, but you don't really want to take, they're not really taking action. Same thing with reach. You might reach a ton of people, but um, you're not pushing toward them doing any kind of action. You're just trying to get the word out. Um, we'll skip traffic engagement because those are the two I want you to focus on just to explain why the other ones don't worry about them. App installs obviously doesn't worry. Don't worry about that. Video views. You can use this if you're really, if you have a great video that you want to promote not just a crappy video that you shot for like 30 seconds on your phone, but if you have a really good video that you wanna promote, you can take advantage of that. Um, lead generation sounds great, but it's honestly a little bit complicated for beginners because you have to have a privacy policy linked to your, um, linked to your account. Um, they send you the leads in like an Excel spreadsheet. It's a little complicated. Um, I would say that's sort of next step uh, once you get comfortable with creating ads this way. Um, and then conversions also a little complicated because you have to have something called a conversion pixel that's embedded into the code on your site, which none of you probably do. So just don't worry about that right now. And then the last two obviously don't make uh, a lot of sense for you. So what we're gonna do is kind of go out of this and go live really quick. And I don't want to update that right now. So we're gonna create an ad. once it loads. Sorry, my uh, Wi-Fi must be a little slow. Okay, so once I've created an ad, right, we, um, sorry. So um, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use traffic. So as you can see here um, on this page, okay, sorry. On this page, the two that really matter the most are traffic and engagement. And I will, um, we're gonna do traffic as an example, but when we get to the very end, um, when we're actually making the ad, I'll show you some screenshots of the difference between traffic and engagement, because it doesn't really change until you get to the very end when you're actually creating the ad. So um, we're gonna click on traffic, which basically means you wanna push, um, send more people to a destination on or off Facebook, which essentially means send people to your website, um, or a page on your Facebook. So we're gonna continue. So the first thing is, um, let's just name this ad set so that they, cause otherwise it'll give you a default and all of your ad sets are gonna look similar to that and that'll get confusing. So we're gonna say webinar test ad. Now, when you get here, you can choose where you want that to drive the traffic unless you have an app, which I doubt you do. You just wanna click website or messenger, which means you can push it through to your website or they can message you directly through Facebook, which might be the best option um, if you're just kind of doing a general ad, like to get people aware of you or if people wanna book a trip to message you. Whereas if you have maybe a specific offer that's on your website that you can link it back to, then you could choose, the, you can use the website. But Either way, this button is for both right now, so just click that that one. Um, now an audience. So this is something I want to explain and kind of show you how you do. Um, you can create custom audiences. So a custom audience, if I clicked on create new right here and I clicked on custom audience, you, there's all these ways you can create a custom audience. A custom audience is basically an audience that you already have. 
So it could be uh, create a list of people who engage with your content on Facebook. So Facebook will create that list for you. Um, these probably won't matter because you probably don't have the list of website traffic, but this is really great, customer file. If you have a list of customers, um, and you know it's best obviously if you have their email, that's the best way to find them on here. But you can upload, a, I'm gonna click on it and show you. Um, you can import it if you have MailChimp or you can upload a file. If you have um, basically an Excel spreadsheet that has all of your client list, you can upload your client list into Facebook. Facebook's gonna find, again, just put aside that it's creepy, it's going to find all of those profiles of people who are associated um, with your client list it's going to profile them and say, okay, these are their interests. This is their age group. This is their gender. And then it um, will profile that so that you can later make a lookalike audience, which I will get to. But you can create a custom audience so that Facebook will push out your ad directly to your audience that you already have. Um, I hope that made sense. So if you create a custom audience, it's basically an, off, an audience that you already have. And you can add it in here. So if I wanted to add a custom audience, um, let's say I've got my leads. We'll do Uniglobe contacts, 300 people. So I can use my contacts, and it's going to go out to those 300 people that I've um, already put in here. The one thing to keep in mind, though, um, and we'll go back here because I've got it on this this um, these screenshots for you so that you can remember. Um, so custom audience is based off current clients or fans. But just keep in mind, they can only find them if their email is associated with their profile um, on Facebook. So like if you have their business email, like it's likely that their personal account is not linked to their business email. So that's why um, not all of them, it might not find all of them. And you do have to have at least 20 names in order to build a custom list. Um, so then we'll go to lookalike audiences, um, which is if I wanted to create a lookalike audience, and a lookalike audience basically means I can take a custom audience, which could be our contacts, or it could be people who like um, Uniglobe Travel Center, and it's going to profile all those people, like I just mentioned, find out their likes, interests, and it's going to find lookalikes, people very, very similar to them, because the likelihood of, you know, they have some common interest, all these people that like your page, Facebook is going to find people like that. So I know all that sounds very complicated. But you don't have to worry about that because Facebook does it for you. All you have to do is create custom lists if you want, or you can use your current fans and you can create lookalike audiences. All you've got to do is press these buttons and follow the steps. I promise you, once you do it, it's very easy. Um, the great thing is you can play with Facebook. You can click on things. It's not until the very end that you have to buy anything. Um, so you're not going to screw something up. All you've got to do is push an X or go back. Um, so don't worry about clicking on things. So another thing that you can do is, we're just gonna leave my custom audiences, but I also can create an audience of people and their interests. So let's say I only wanna target people 22 to 56, because it's easy. And let's say I only wanna target women who speak English. Okay, so you can choose these things. Let's say um, I only want people who are in Florida. So I can choose just people in Florida. But sometimes it's a little, um, it becomes a little narrow depending on what our other um, targeting we're going to put in. So just so that we don't run into any complications, I'm just going to use the United States right now. But you, you can see over here um, that my audience size is very specific. And that's because right now it's only pulling from my contacts list. Um, it's only pulling from that customer list. But we're going to add we're actually just gonna let me just take them out um, and so that you can see that now it's got all these people in the United States who are between 22 and 56 and are women who speak English so we're still in the green but it's still pretty broad so let's add some more targeting so let's say someone wants to go on a cruise uh, or let's say you want to push an ad about a cruise look at all of this that you can do people who are interested in cruises people who like Norwegian lines, people who like Carnival Cruise Lines, people who like Celebrity, Disney, Royal Caribbean, Princess, Holland America. I mean, Facebook basically does it for you. Um, you can choose interests, so pages that they like, 
or interests they have. So I can also, uh, let's say people who um, have been, let me do traveling. There's, uh, there's something that you put in travel. Oh, here we go. You can choose behaviors, people, all frequent, all travelers, international travelers, leisure travelers. This, I know, gets creepy. People who have returned from a trip within the last two weeks. You can do all of these things. You can create such a customized target for this ad. Um, so your ad could literally say, are you missing that vacation? Want to go again for people who have traveled in the last two weeks. So all of these things you can add, um, and I'm not going to spend any more time on it because you can play with this. Um, if you want to take one out, just hit the X. So like I said, just play with it. You, you're not locked into anything. Um, you can just exit out or you can keep looking. Um, Facebook will kind of recommend things based on what you already have. Um, <clears throat> they also have some kind of um, broad things like adventure travel that you can choose. And it'll always tell you how many people. Um, so that one might be really, really broad, but maybe people who like zip lining. So interest, so that's a little bit, that's a little over number. So we're gonna choose zip line. Okay. Another thing you can do is you can um, make sure that you include people who like your page. So if you want your current fans to see this, this is a good option. You can always, you can also choose friends of people who like your page. So um, anyone who's a friend of someone who likes your page. And then if for some reason, you know, you're just trying to get the word out about your agency and you're trying to promote, um, like if you want to get more likes for your page, well, people who already like your page have already liked it. So you can exclude them so the ad doesn't go to them. They don't take up any of your clicks. So something that you can do is, um, let's say you've gone through all this work and you're like, well, that took me a lot of time. I don't want to have to do that every time. Well, you have this great button here called Save This Audience. And when you save this audience, that means you can go back and use it again. So that when you come back and you want to use an audience you've already created, it can show up here. So this is an audience that I have created. So I'm going to click on this just to show you how it populates. So it'll, it's got, um, how many does it have? I don't want to create it. Let me see if I go here to tell me. Well, I guess it's already clicked on it. So that one I think had about, you know, 3 million potential. That doesn't mean it's reaching 3 million. It's telling you what the potential audience is. Um, and this will tell you your estimated daily reach. So it'll likely reach 24 to 6,500 people a day. Um, so it'll give you about how much, uh, how many people you're going to reach. So all of these things you can put in. If you want to save your audience, you can save it here. And then we're going to go into placements. Just click on automatic placements. Don't get complicated. Don't try and edit all of your placements. Um, the only thing here is if you don't, I would say if you don't want Instagram, you can hit that button um, and it'll take Instagram off. You want to do audience network because audience network is basically apps and websites that Facebook is partnered with. So you kind of get advertising on not just Facebook, but these other relevant sites as well. Um, and you usually get great return on those. So I would say always do audience network, but um, it's up to you if you want this to also run on Instagram or Facebook. Um, it, it defaults to also running on Instagram. So if you don't want Instagram or you don't have an Instagram linked, then you can edit the placements and take that out. Okay, let me get a drink real quick. We're almost to the last page, so just stick with me, guys. So budget and schedule. You can choose to create a daily budget or you can choose a lifetime budget. So the daily budget is how much you want to spend a day. Lifetime budget is how much you want to spend in the lifetime of that ad. So this one runs for a month, um, and you'll spend $350 for that month. So what I was saying before, when you don't have enough time, at the beginning of the month, create an ad, spend 50 bucks, and run it for two weeks. So you've done one ad, and it's running for two weeks. So it shouldn't take you more than, even your first time, shouldn't take you more than 15, 20 minutes to get it done. You should have the time to take 15 or 20 minutes every two weeks to create an ad. You can run it for a month if you want, um, but this is a really great thing. The one thing I would be careful of is if you click daily budget, um, set a start and end date. If you click run my ad continuously, it's just going to keep charging you your $20 a day until you remember to turn it off. That can be a little 
uh, it can be a little bit dangerous. So if you run, so don't click on run your ad um, continuously, go ahead and pick a start and end date. I recommend this anyway, just always pick a start and end date. Um, bid amount, I would, I would say keep that um, automatic. It's just a little bit more uh, complicated. Don't worry about it, they optimize it for you. So these things you can pretty much keep the same. And I believe in our slides here, I've put that in here so that you can keep in mind. So um, this is basically a list that you can go through if you need to refer back to the slides. I've got that note about, you know, don't put it on daily budget if you don't put the dates in um, and keeping your advanced options how they are. So this is just a, something for you to refer back to um, once you have, if you need to come back to these slides. But we've done it all in here. Okay, so let's say we've got everything the way we want. Let's say we're spending a lifetime budget of 350. I'm obviously not going to spend that, but I can keep clicking because I haven't bought anything yet. Okay, so this is the last page because this is where you actually create your ad. And this is the one um, that is for traffic. So it's going to push links and whatnot back to your um, website or to Facebook Messenger. But I did want to show you really quick in the slides. Um, I did give you I did give an example of what it looks like if you were to have chosen engagement. So at the very beginning when you were choosing your campaign, if you had chosen engagement, you've got three options. The first one is that's not it. The first one is regular engagement. So when you create the ad, this page here let's um put one in here so you can see what it what it looks like already. So let's say use an existing post just so something pops up. So see, it has an existing post in here. So this is kind of where it's going to show you what you can do. If you were to do the engagement, all the options that pop up, not all of this stuff, is like, comment, share. Okay? So um, you can only really put, a te put text in at the top, and then if someone wants to like, comment, or share. So this is just when you want to make somebody maybe aware of something, but they don't need to take an actual action by going to your site. Um, the other option under engagement is page likes. So the only difference is the ad looks a little different because this encouraging someone to like your page. Um, and the only difference is when there's these ads that are in the right-hand column, you can change the headline. I wouldn't worry about that. It doesn't matter. Um, you can kind of just, it's got limited options. Same thing um, under engagement, event responses. So if you are promoting a certain event, you will have had to have already created the event um, on your Facebook page, but um, once you have that event created on your business page, you can actually link it here. So the ad, I didn't have a, an event to show you the example, but if you were to have an event, you can promote that event through Facebook. So you just choose, um, you just put your, you can just start typing in the name of the event and it'll pop up and then you can write some text about it. So those are three options if you were to choose engagement on that very first page where it says, do you want to do traffic? Do you want to do engagement? You'd click on engagement and it would give you the three options of engagement, likes, or event, um, event responses. So it'll walk you through it. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a Facebook ad. So um, this is just a little cheat sheet. Don't get freaked out by the arrows. I just kind of wanted to show you where things correspond. But you'll see when we make the ad um, that you'll, you can see what changes. So you can tell where they're at if you, if you forget. Um, this right here has a URL that's kind of covered. But this is up here is where it actually links to. So this would be your, um, your website or your page that it's going back to. Or you could choose the message uh, option if they wanted to message you in Facebook, if that's what you want them to do. But you can, that might be kind of a long, ugly URL. So you can actually down here change what the display of the URL is. So you can name that URL or write that URL out so it looks a little prettier. Um, your main text goes here. Your headline goes there. And then you can change, and we'll, we'll do this um, live, but you can change what the button looks like here. So all of these things, all you got to do is click on them. Don't get overwhelmed. All you got to do is click on it, start typing, and it'll show you where it's at. So um, we're going to just do this really quickly. Um, we're going to create a new ad, and we want to do a single image. So um, upload an image. I probably should have prepared an image. We're going to use this, actually, um, once it uploads. 
So oh, don't worry about this because I just used an image that I'd grabbed offline for something completely different. Um, it'll tell you if it's too small. So I've got my mobile news feed. I can click through these and it'll show me what it'll look like. Um, so this is what it'll look like on desktop, right? So I can choose, um, just as an example, this is a link I've used before. So when I put that link in there, it's gonna automatically pull up some text that's associated with that page, but you can always change that. So I can change, ready to make some money. So I'll type that in, and as you can see, it's gonna change right here, okay? New to the industry, that's the headline. I can add an exclamation point so you can see how it changes. Um, the text, uh, this text looks the same because it's pulled from the page, but if I were to do the newsfeed link description, which is right here, you'll be able to see that it changes here. If I wanted to change the display URL, I could. So I've just created an ad. Now you can upload more than one image. So if I were to upload another image, let's see if I've got one um, handy. Uh, yep, okay, so we're just gonna use that because it's a PNG image. Sorry, I should have prepared like good images for you guys, but just to show you how it works, if it will upload. Okay, so if it doesn't upload, the point is you can put as many images as you want, so you can basically use this for testing. Because you can use five different images with the same text, and it's going to um, push out all of those different ads, and you can see which ones do the best. And if you had more than one image, you could go through here, see it hasn't uploaded yet. Oh, there we go. Uh, and you can see the different ads. So this shows you the different placements, whereas up here shows you the different ads. So basically that's it, you're done, and all you have to do is come down here and place order, which I am not, not going to do. Um, and now you've created an ad and it's running for two weeks and you've spent 20 minutes, and you should be able to manage that. So the last thing I wanna show you before we get to questions um, is how you manage your ads. So here's a screenshot to so where we're gonna go. Um, but if we, we're already in Ads Manager, so let me just show you something from the beginning so you can. You click here, and instead of create, oh, come on now. Instead of create uh, ads, you're going to manage ads. So it'll show my account, so I'm going to click on this account because you could have multiple pages and you could have multiple accounts. And these are all my campaigns. So let's just click on one of the campaigns. Just keep clicking. Okay, so as you can see, this is something that I did. Um, so what I found is I ran the exact same ad, but it has three different images, right? And what I noticed was that this one was getting a lot more activity. It's got more reach because it's, it was being clicked on more, so Facebook optimizes for you, so things that are being liked and clicked on more get served more. So I noticed that this one was doing much better than these other two, so all I did was hit this button here, and it pauses these so they're not running and all your money's going to this one. So it's a very easy way to test. Leave it for a few days, see which ones are doing best, which ones have the best click rates, which ones have the best you know, cost per click, and you can just start running those. And the only other thing that really uh, you wanna pay attention to on here is this is where you get your metrics. So if you click on this little button, view chart, you can see uh, and click on your demographics. You can see, obviously this was, this was much more popular with women who were over 65 or 45 to 54. So you can see the exact people who are clicking on your ad. Um, another thing that you can do here is if you click edit, you can edit the ad. So if you wanted to change the text, if you realize that you misspelled something, um, you can go in here and you can change, if we just scroll down, you can change anything in the ad. And this little button here, the duplicate button, if let's say this picture is really popular, but you want to test two different copy, so you want one to say something and one to say the other and see which copy people like better, 
All you have to do is duplicate that ad and you just go through the steps to change the text. Um, so really cool stuff. And there are screenshots on all of this so that you can see um, what all, remember what those, so that's the view charts one. This one is the edit button. This one is, um, shows you where the duplicate is. And so the only other very last thing I wanna show you is if you're gonna run ads, you have to put your credit card in. <laughs> um, and I'm not gonna show you because then I don't think my boss would appreciate me showing you all of our payment information, but if you click on billing and payments, um, that's where you can choose, you can put your credit card in and you also can choose, a, a what's it called? It's called a account spending limit. So when you put an account spending limit, it doesn't matter what you're running, Facebook will never spend more than that. So if you, you know, set your limit at $1,000 and you're running an ad and you're about to run out of money, um, you're about to get to $1,000, you have to go back in and readjust that account limit because that's just a, a fail safe so that you don't accidentally spend more than you meant to. So I, I would just put maybe your yearly budget as your account spending limit and then um, that way you can, you, you know you'll never go over that, but then you can, for each individual campaign, you can choose how much you want to spend for that campaign. So um, that's basically it. I know it's a lot of information, but the biggest thing is just go in, click around, and try it. And you'll see that it's not as complicated. I'm just trying to show you, you know, a lot in a small period of time. Um, so if you do need any help, Canva.com is where you can create ads and other media. Um, this is Facebook's support site. And then Facebook Blueprint is actual training modules. They're short videos that you can watch to learn about Facebook advertising. And what I do when I don't know what something means or don't know how to do something, I just Google it. So that's probably your best resource. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So um, I think we've got a little bit of time for questions. Um, Sandy, if you want to hit me with some questions, we can do that. Fantastic. So Summer, that was just incredible. So much information. Thank you so much. We do have several questions. Um, I'm going to ask a few. And um, okay. if uh, we don't get to your question, or if you think of something after the webinar, then uh, do get in touch with Summer. She has her um, email address up there now, and she can point you in the right direction. Um, so let's get to a few of these questions. One of our agents wants to know, if you're trying to broaden your reach because you don't have a large audience now, would you choose lookalike audience? If you want to broaden your reach. Yeah, I think, here's the thing is, I think lookalike audience is always a good idea. Um, so if you have enough Facebook fans, because I think there's a minimum, it might be 100 in order to make a lookalike audience. Um, if you've got enough uh, fans already, go ahead and make a lookalike audience. If you've got a custom list, create the custom list and use the lookalike audience. What I didn't show you is you can choose all of those lists in one in um, one ad. So it's not like you have to choose your custom audience or choose your, your lookalike audience. All of those people can be included in your target. So I would say no matter what, always, always go in and make a lookalike audience. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I want to tell you that most of the, uh, we've gotten many, many questions about where our agents can view this webinar again. There was so much to absorb uh, that a lot of people are asking about that. I've put the information, if you look on the right-hand side of your screen on that dashboard, I've put the information down at the bottom of that. Um, one of the places you can view it after about 24 hours is on homebasetravelagent.com uh, in the videos area. You'll be able to see this wonderful presentation again. Um, one of our agents... Can, oh, sorry. Sorry, I just choked my water, but <clears throat> I was going to tell you, I can also send you the slides so they can just refer to the slides if they don't want to watch the entire video. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, if uh, if anyone out there wants just the slides, uh, get in touch with Summer, and um, uh, thank you for that generous offer. Summer will be happy to send them to you. Um, can you create an ad campaign from a smartphone or from an uh, uh, another kind of device, or do you have to be in kind of desktop mode? Um, I will say I think that you will find it much easier in desktop mode. Um, I know that you can look at your insights and activity, but um, I don't think that you can create an ad specifically from your, your smartphone. I've never tried to do it but I'm actually looking right now um, and I don't see an option to create them. I only see an option to look at your insights. 
Okay. Uh, if an agent, can you target a specific group that you have uh, as uh, on your Facebook rather than, uh, uh, you know, targeting a, a general audience? Um, <clears throat> I'd have to go in and look. Um, if you could give me maybe the contact information of that person. Um, I've never targeted a group specifically, but it might be possible um, to do that. I would just have to kind of try it out first. But if you could, um, well, I guess you're going to send me the list of people, but I will reach out to whoever that is directly um, once I try it out myself. Okay. Thank you so much. And unfortunately, I think we have time for just one more question because we do want to get to the um, prize giveaway. Um, let me see. Choose one that a lot of people have asked. Okay, well, one of our agents wants to know um, if he can uh, upload an existing ad he has on his memory stick to Facebook to recreate it. Um, if, uh, so if he has it on his memory stick, if it's a screenshot of an ad that he made, um, he wouldn't really be able to do that. I'd have to know the specific instances, but I mean, if he's got the image that he used and he's got the text, it wouldn't take very long for him to recreate it. Um, if it's uh, something that he's already done, he should be able to go back into his Facebook and just reactivate it and set it for new uh, parameters. So if it is an ad he already created, it should, it should be in his ads manager. Um, he probably can't upload it directly from memory stick because the only thing you can really upload in an ad is an image. So it would kind of need to be the raw image in order to create the ad again. Okay. And I'm going to sneak one more quick question in there. And that yeah. is, can you target um, either an income level or a zip code when you're targeting the, your audience? Um, I believe you can target a zip code. Um, you would just have to start typing it in, in, in the little location area. Uh, income level, I believe there's a way to target income level, um, but I'd have to look because I don't know if Facebook has that information um, or not because I don't know if they ask for that in the profile. So I don't know if they have a basically a reliable way to know people's income. So I'd have to look into the income question. Okay, great. So again, we have many, many questions that we don't have time to answer. So please do jot down uh, Summer's email. She's been nice enough to uh, offer to either answer your question or uh, point you in the right direction. Uh, so thank you so much for that, Summer. And let's get sure. to the prize giveaway. Summer and Uniglobe have very generously agreed to provide a $50 gift card to a lucky travel agent, and that this is how it's going to work. Summer is going to ask a question about something that she just discussed in this webinar. And the first correct answer I see come across my screen will be the winner. I'll announce who the winner is, and we will provide your contact information to Summer, and she will get in touch with you about redeeming your card. But I'm only going to look at the answers that come in after Summer has completed and uh, asking the question. So if she's partway through it and you think you know the answer, don't answer, wait until she's finished um, because there is some differences in um, transmission, the way people hear the question. So Summer, if you're all ready, go ahead and ask your question. Yep, so um, if you're paying attention, this was a very important point. Uh, the US Small Business Administration recommends spending what percentage of your gross revenue on marketing and advertising? Okay, we have many, many answers. And let's get to the first correct answer after you finished reading. Okay, the answer is seven to eight percent. And the first correct answer I saw on my screen was from Mike McNally. So, congratulations to Mike McNally. Summer will be getting in touch with you about redeeming your $50 gift card. And, Summer, thank you again for, uh, for providing that. Um, this has been Thanks absolutely for fantastic. Uh, our um, Host has been Uniglobe Travel Center, and our speaker has been Summer Corbett, Sales and Marketing Manager for Uniglobe. Summer, thank you. I learned a lot. I know everybody learned a lot, and you'll see that we've gotten so many questions and comments. So thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys having me. 
Um, I hope that you weren't too overwhelmed. I know it's a lot, but I really want you guys to just try it. Uh, I promise it's not as scary as you think, and I will do my best um, to try and get to your questions that weren't answered on the webinar because they're going to send those to me. So I'll do my best to try and reach out to you guys and answer your questions. And um, I'm happy to help in any way. So please email me if you want any kind of information. Thank you so much. And thank you also again to all of our agents on this call. We really appreciate your taking time out of your day uh, to attend the webinar. I know you are not disappointed. This was absolutely fantastic. So thanks again for being here. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.